This week I learned if you want the best Grimdark that you can possibly find, like you can't sleep Grimdark, all you gotta look at is history, you guys. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are continuing to roll through the month of May. Another fun week is in the books, and guys, I am here to tell you all about it. So let's begin like usual, guys. Let's kick things off with what am I reading? So I completed Winter King last week, so this week I completed book two of that uh, series, Warlord Chronicles, as Enemy of God. And guys, God, I said that about nine times reading this book, maybe more, because uh, yeah, this is one of the most brutal books that I've ever read, and there's lots of scenes in it that, um, as a parent, were really tough to read, because uh, yeah, Cornwall pulls no punches when it comes to uh, what ha bad things that happen to children in this, and it is it is just heart-wrenching. There's some really, really, really rough stuff in here, so much so that I said I wanted to take a break and read something else between book two and three, just to kind of cope a little bit because uh, yeah it's dark guys this is really really messed up stuff in here but again phenomenal uh, i know a lot of people say it's way better than the first book i thought it was about on par which i loved by the way so yes i i really do enjoy both books this one i was thinking was it gonna be as good as winter king but then like the last act just went completely crazy and uh really put it on par with that book for me so uh yeah two for two in that series for me, I don't see any reason I'm not going to uh, to like how it ends. If it's uh, Even if it's just more of the same, I am here for it because uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? That's kind of where I'm at with it. But uh, yeah, I'll be picking that up here again as soon as I finish what I'm currently working on, which I did cut ahead, which is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. Yeah, I'm flying through this, guys. Uh, I should probably finish it, uh, you know, probably uh, tomorrow or Saturday, I think, at the latest, or uh, Saturday or Sunday at the latest. But uh, first, Robert McCammon. Uh, this is a, an author that people have uh, been dropping in my Stephen King videos for years since I've been doing that Into the Multiverse stuff, telling me, as much as you like Stephen King, I really think you'd like Robert McCammon. Now, here's the thing. Kind of like how I said about when I first got into Blake Crouch, is, uh, you know, everyone tells me that there's an author that's like Michael Crichton. And I never, ever found one that was like Michael Crichton until I found Blake Crouch. And I always have a lot of people, well, if you like Stephen King, I think you'd like this. This is the first time I can feel like it's a pretty good comparison. Now, uh, it's more of the, you know, the coming of age slice of life stuff that Stephen King does well through the eyes of a preteen. This is it. Uh, he's He has found that same magic here. I think he's really captured you know, that magic of childhood and seeing it through a child's eyes really, really well. He's doing the small town really good. And, uh, you know, he's even got the, the creeps in here just a little bit. But uh, it's really, I'd almost say almost more of like a, you know, I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure. And I don't even want to tell you, but a, a lot of mystery involved with this one. And it really, guys, it starts off like right away and it hooks you and you cannot stop. But uh, yeah, there's been some stuff in here that, uh, I think a coming-of-age book is really, really good is when it makes me recall something from my childhood. And there's a specific scene in here with this boy named Nemo that really made me think about back to something about my childhood as being a, a you know, a child of a, a parents that were uh, always moving and things like that. Uh, stuff that uh, really makes you think back to your own childhood is when I feel like it's done really well. And uh, yeah, he's capturing that very, very well. So my first McCammon, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the last. I already have Swan Song. And uh, if, if I like that one as much as I'm liking this, uh, yeah, I think that I'm going to be reading much, much more from this author because I'm liking Boy's Life quite a bit. I think it is just phenomenal. And I only got, I'm, there's four parts in there. It's uh, one of the each season, spring, summer, uh, autumn, and winter. And I'm about to start winter here after I finish this video, probably. Now, this was just kind of a off the rails kind of thing. I just decided to do it because why not? Now, guys, I read this when it first came out. I think it was like 2013 or 14, I think this came out. Read it cover to cover when it first came out. By the way, some of the best art in all of Song of Ice and Fire is in this book. But uh, the thing with that was, is I said, I, I think I'll reread this, uh, just the Targaryen bits to get, you know, because we've decided that we're going to do a uh, Discord read along in July of uh, Fire and Blood, you know, so that'll be a reread for me. So I said, I'll just do this as, you know, just kind of a, a refresher, because be honest with you, a lot of those Targaryen names, they sound alike, so it's hard to keep a lot of them, uh, you know, just separated. And I picked this up to plan to do that, and I just started reading the whole thing again. So, you know, I'm not that much into it, but I said, I'm just going to kind of read this a little bit each night before bed kind of thing, and, uh, you know, just until we get to July, because uh, that is an anticipation of House of the Dragon. But guys, if you want to know everything 
about the world, the history of A Song of Ice Fire, this is it. There's no better resource. This is very much George R. R. Martin's uh, Silmarillion. It really is. It really builds that world and gives you so many answers. So even if you've only watched the show, I think that you would love what you learned about in this book. Some great, great stuff. Kind of joke about it, and I definitely don't know everything, but I said I feel like I've I feel like at times I feel like I've forgotten more than most people will, will ever know about Song of Ice and Fire because you guys don't know how many times I reread that series uh, long before HBO even had the rights to it. So, uh, yeah, it's a series that I love a lot, which I talked about, you know, recently this week. But, uh, yeah, that's why I'm kind of getting into that before we do a, which will be a reread for me of Fire and Blood. It'll be a lot of other people's first read, but I think that'll help them a lot if they plan on watching House of the Dragon. So, uh, I also finished Berserk, guys, uh, volume 35. That is the end of that Falcon of the Millennium Empire arc. So, you guys who have been very, very patient with me, Thank you so much. I don't have plans, immediate plans to uh, to, to review it, but uh, obviously that's going to be happening sooner rather than later. Before I start any other manga or comic series, I will be doing that review. So uh, like I've told you before, though, be prepared because it is going to be the most mixed of any of my Berserk reviews yet. So I plan on getting a... Yeah getting attacked in those comments, but hey, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Maybe you guys can explain some things to me that, uh, because it happened uh, more in this volume than I think than any of the other arcs in that series. So let's move along, guys, to what am I going to read? Obviously, I'm going to do Excalibur, and uh, I don't imagine that that's going to take me too long, guys, because we have something else planned right after that, but I'm going to keep working on a World of Ice and Fire, but like I said, that's just going to be very, very slow rolled a little bit each night, like I said before bed. This I'd like to finish by Thursday morning, <laughs> which I know is kind of like, whoa, wait a second, uh, because uh, on the 19th, we are starting back on the Path of the Beam. This is uh, Wolves of the Kala, book number five of the Dark Tower, and that is a, a read-along being done on the Discord the 19th of every month until we get to the end. So I'm joining them for that one this month, and I'm very excited to do so. So uh, I said my original plan was to try and read... All, all three of those Arthur books before the 19th. Now I'm trying to fit Boy's Life in there too. So uh, it's just, it's a great time reading for me, guys. I'm just, I'm having so much fun with all of these new authors I'm picking up. Cornwell and McCammon, it's the first time revisiting one of my favorite fantasy series ever, The Dark Tower and Song of Ice and Fire. These are just good times for me, guys. I'm having a blast with it. Uh, then after that, you know, it, all I got left for the month is uh, that next book in the Cradle series. So uh, I'm well ahead of myself for the month. But, you know, uh, who, with Dark Tower stuff, you never know how long it's going to take to read it. At least that's what I'm telling myself because uh, I'm reading a lot faster than I expected. But my kid does turn 10 on the 19th as well. So I, play, I imagine I'll be kind of busy for most of that weekend because 10, that's a big one. It's a big deal, right? I've kept a kid alive for 10 years. That's an accomplishment in its own right, yeah. So uh, let's go ahead and move along, guys, to this week on the channel. So speaking of Dark Tower, I did do my... Into the Multiverse for Wizard and Glass. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to leave that in yet or not. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, I've d <laughs> but when you talk about the Dark Tower and you're talking about sequels, you know, a lot of people tapped out this point. So I want to make sure I said why I thought it was worth continuing, even if you tapped out there. So that's what that that's, that review is all about and why I think on a reread, it really kind of blew my mind a little bit. The, the, the things, again, that are foreshadowed for the rest of the, the, you know, the latter half of that series is very, very exciting times. And uh, yeah, it's a book that I loved in a, a way that uh, two, three, and four, I don't know. It's like flip a coin. Flip two coins, flip three coins. Uh, I, I don't really know if I can pick one that uh, I like the best at this point. So this reread has been very eye-opening for me, and I hope that that continues as we now get into the, uh, the the half of the series that I don't like as much as the first half. But who knows how things have changed since I was 19. A very peculiar number, yes. Then I did a kind of off-the-cuff one, which was called If You Love That, Try This Next. Now, that's just really just uh, recommendations. Really say, uh, you know, hey, uh, you like you like Dark Tower. Here's another series. Where actually, I couldn't do Dark Tower. You like A Song of Ice and Fire. Here's another series that I would recommend that I think you might like as well. It isn't necessarily a, uh, if this is just like this, but it's more of like, I think fans of this one would like that one. That's kind of what I did there. Didn't get a, 
a ton of, of pushback in there. So a lot of people really more were cursing me for making them pick up new books. Yeah, <laughs> I get that a lot. But uh, I'm always happy to spend you guys money that way. But uh, you'd rather spend your money on books than, you know, anything else, I think. So uh, that's uh, always going to be a compliment if you're if you're upset at me for that. But uh, yeah, a lot of fun to talk about that. A lot of fun to you know try to get some eyes on some series that I love that maybe other people hadn't thought about giving a chance yet. But they heard, hey, well, you know, I really like Dresden Files. You know, maybe I'll check out Hellblazer now. Things like that. That's kind of what I was going for with that video. And then, of course, my most requested video is uh, an update to my top 10 fantasy series. And there were some changes. Uh, there were some movers and shakers. There was a couple of new entrants on that list. And there were some things that dropped off. And there were some, uh, some things that dropped back on that list and a couple of things even moved up a little bit so uh i wanted to make sure that i didn't do that until it had changed some because i really did not want to just do the same video again that feels cheap so uh yeah some things stayed the same i tried to make sure i didn't talk about the same things this time and i also tried to make it like a follow-up video you know so i wouldn't say the same things over again i referenced that first video a lot in there so that's kind of what i was trying to do to to keep it uh keep it fresh so i'm not repeating myself over and over and over again with that video. So uh, in, unless I read just like a, a hell of a lot of series between now and 2023, I don't think I'll be, I, I think two years is a good time to every every couple of years to update that list maybe. Uh, have a lot of people ask me now, are you going to do one for sci-fi? And I said, I don't think I've read enough sci-fi series to do that. But then they said, well, how about a top five? So maybe I'll do a top five sci-fi series because, you know, I don't think I've read that many. I don't know. I have to seriously sit down and think about that one. But as always, if that's something that you guys want to see, I could definitely probably do that. Now, there is something that I want to talk about here, and that is this poll that I put up on the channel. And this poll asked, you know, of the series below, which would you see like to see me give the full like retrospective, you know, standard review kind of retrospective for? And it was, it was all books, really, that I had read or read some of. So uh, it's one of those things that people ask me, hey, you, are you going to reread these before? No, no, it just kind of depends on what wins. So uh, the series I brought up were Red Rising, uh, Song of Ice and Fire, Dune, just the Frank Herbert stuff, uh, First Law, the original trilogy, and King Killer Chronicle by uh, uh, Patrick Rothfuss, which is, is kind of funny because I've only read the first book. Now, the whole reason I put this poll up is I just was kind of thinking... What are some reviews of, because I said I don't do series very often, you know, because the sequels, you know, they just get less and less interest along the way. Now, here's the catch here. I already have planned to do Red Rising. Uh, when Pierce Brown announces when that next book is coming out, I'm going to do a full retrospective leading up each month leading up to the release of book number six in that series. So that one's, even if that had won, that wasn't going to be happening until that. So really, I'll be honest, guys. I thought that Song and Ice and Fire would win this going away. I thought this would be either because I haven't reviewed any of the Song of Ice and Fire books on the channel. But I thought with us doing uh, House of the Dra House of the Dragon, Fire and Blood, before uh, in anticipation for House of the Dragon, I thought, okay, maybe I'll do it like this. Maybe I'll review the Song of Ice and Fire books, but I'll do them in timeline order instead of publication order, meaning I would do Fire. Uh, maybe I would even do this uh, World Nice of Fire first. I don't know. But I would do Fire and Blood, then uh, Night of the Seven Kingdoms before moving on to the main series. You know, Maybe that could be something that I could do on the channel. I don't know. But that would be a long, slow process because a lot of people ask me, are you going to reread those? I would kind of need to, guys. The last time I read the Song of Ice Fire books uh, was a reread right before the release of A Dance with Dragons in 2011. So yeah, I would probably need to reread those. So that would be something that would be slow. Uh, over the course of the next couple of years, I would be doing those. But it was just an idea. But as of recording this, over 5,000 votes have come in. First Law is winning. Uh, first Law had beat it. Now, I was stunned because I've done a lot of First Law talk on the channel. Now, here's the deal with that original trilogy. I never did standard reviews for that original trilogy. I only did spoiler talks for those first three books and my Why You Should Read. That's all I did for it when I first really started this channel. So if people want to see me give it the standard review treatment for those first three books, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Maybe for the spoiler talk updates, I could have a discussion with some of my other First Law pals, like maybe Petrick and, and, and Philip and people like that. People I know that love First Law as much as I do, you know? 
I could be something that I could do. So uh, really with things like this, guys, I'm just gauging interest. You guys want to see me cover some of this stuff. So it was very encouraging uh, what I saw there. Uh, poor King Killer Chronicles in last, though. So I thought maybe people wanted me to do that just so they could get the LOLs. You know, maybe, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, a, a video I've got planned for next week might actually give you some more context for uh, my, my thoughts on King Killer. Let's go ahead and talk about some next week plans now. I am going to be doing my Talk About Nothing with the lovely Joanna. And that's something that I, I think should be a lot of fun because I think she's just a kind and generous soul. Every time we've uh, interacted, it's been a totally positive experience. Uh, I think we've only actually ever physically spoke to each other once. And that was when we talked about Dune on her channel right before the movie came out or right after the movie came out. It was the first time she had read the book. Uh, but I, I'm very much interested in hearing what we talk about because she's a... I don't want to say she's disappointed, but uh, she understands. But I think she might be a little disappointed that uh, that, I, I, that I've kind of paused Malazan for now. But she she definitely understands. She's a she's finished the series and she uh, has plenty to say about it. So that should be a fun conversation. I think we're going to be doing that one live, like uh, Andrew and I did. So you guys can drop us questions while we are talking if you want to. But obviously, with the talk about nothing, our conversation is going to take priority. So don't get mad if I'm not answering your question. Save, save those for a live stream if you just want to do an Ask Me Anything kind of thing. Then uh, we'll be continuing with the Tolkien coverage leading up to Rings of Power. This month, it's going to be The Hobbit. I'm going to be reviewing The Hobbit. And uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to be doing a, a spoiler discussion with anybody yet. I haven't really talk to anyone about it but uh, I will be doing just my standard review for The Hobbit and I can't wait because I even feel like even if people love Lord of the Rings they still think ah well The Hobbit's kind of childish I don't know if I want to go back and read it and I'm here to tell you why you need to so that is always going to be fun anytime I can talk about Tolkien on the channel I'm going to do it because uh, if you guys watched that video this past week still my favorite fantasy series of all time and then probably uh, what, what, what a lot of people like to call a, a drink, in the, drink in the Haterade be talking about 12 series that I will not finish. And that sounds like a bold statement because I, 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 I never say never on these things. But these are 12 series I looked at and said, you know what? I've got all these other series I want to read before I die. I'm not going to waste my time on these series I'm not having fun with. And the thing about me, I won't DNF a book very often, but I will DNF the hell out of a series. If that trajectory just keeps going down each release... Yeah, I got no problem releasing it. So uh, some on there, I think if you've watched this channel frequently, you know what some of them are. But I think there'll be some surprises on there for you as well. That's kind of what I've got planned for next week, guys. But before I go, there is some TV and movie talk stuff. Any other content creators, like, never have your phone go off until you're recording a video? Like, every time. It's like, it's amazing, right? Well, hey, the biggest thing, I think, in, in movie news is that Dune has cast the Emperor for Dune Part 2. And, of course, this is going to be played by Christopher Walken looking for the spice. Uh, well, look, here's the thing with this. Uh, kind of stunned me. Uh, not what I imagined at all. I think Christopher Walken is an incredible actor, obviously. I mean, the guy's been doing it forever. And I think he can play Sinister quite well. The problem I have with this, I feel like Christopher Walken, it's kind of like Tom Cruise, amazing actor, but he kind of plays the same character in every movie. And that's how, that's how I feel. It's not just about the pause. I mean, the pause thing is kind of fun to make fun of, right? But uh, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't I feel like if they were going to go this way, you should have went Willem Dafoe. I think Willem Dafoe would have probably fitted a little more. However, however, Denny V has my full trust in this. And if he, if this is what his vision sees... I'm going to go with it. I think he's going to be able to do just fine with it. And again, it's not like he cast, you know, Channing Tatum or something here, you know. He cast Christopher Walken. Uh, I can roll with it, I guess. Uh, but I, again, uh, Denny B's got my trust. No matter what he does, I'm going to trust all of his castings because he hasn't let me down yet. So uh, uh, that one kind of remains to be seen. I, I can't wait to see uh, how they approach the Emperor in this because I'm not sure it's going to be quite... Like many of us imagine, I don't know, kind of anxious to see now. So I think the, God, what the only big casting left really is Aaliyah, Aaliyah Atreides, I think. So uh, we'll see. I still think they're going to go with an unknown in that one because uh, I, I can't think of very many uh, actresses that young. I mean, I think that, I think they're going to have to age that character up. But I talked about that when I did my, my fan casting Dune video, which uh, of course none of my picks have been right, obviously. But you know, hey. That's why Denny V is the, the billion-dollar director, and I'm just a guy with Wi-Fi, right? I did, did get a new Doctor Who, by the way, and I can't pronounce this gentleman's name, so I apologize. I think it's Nkudi Gatwa. 
Uh, I think he's on some show on Netflix called Sex Education. Don't know anything about it. Never seen it. Never seen him in anything before. Uh, with me, guys, again, I've talked about this ad nauseum. My problem with Doctor Who these days wasn't Jodie Whittaker. And it won't be in Kuti Gatwa. If I'm saying that right, I apologize if I'm not. Uh, it won't be him either. My problem has been that the writer's room just doesn't respect Doctor Who at all. They haven't respected the lore. And they haven't respected that this is supposed to be a fun sci-fi escapist show and it's just it's kind of lost that plot you know about midway through capaldi's run it kind of lost that that that, that plot so uh really to me it's like okay russell t davies is coming back so i know it's someone that respects the lore but he's also been away from it for what like a decade plus now who knows how he's evolved as a, a, a showrunner so we'll see we'll see uh it really i feel like they've kind of lost me with doctor who i feel like chibnall just completely ruined the entire canon of the show, it would be really hard to get me back short of them doing like the first degeneration and either David Tennant or Matt Smith comes back. That'd be the only thing that like day one viewing that I would probably be there for. But uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, who knows? It could completely turn around and I could be laughing at this because I won't lie. I'd love to have Doctor Who back in my life. I really, really would. So hopefully uh, they do bring it back to the, uh, the greatness that it did have at one point. The trailer for Avatar 2 did come out. And I know that the big question is, uh, does anybody care anymore? It's been, what, 12 years since the last? Was it, I think it might have been longer, 13 years? I don't know. The thing with uh, with Avatars is I'm always like, I think people are a little too hard on it. In hindsight, I'm like, look, it didn't become the highest grossing movie at all time because nobody watched it. I mean, everybody watched it. It was a... It was a a rad experience at the time. And that was like when I first like thought that 3D was actually like pretty cool at the theater. Uh, with this trailer, it uh, looks great i guess i mean it looks neat it looks really cool to me it's always going to look fake uh no matter how good cgi looks it's always going to look like cgi so that's always going to kind of take me out of it with the first one i remember thinking that and then like after about 10 minutes i didn't even realize it anymore and i was just totally in into it so with this is uh, i wish that the trailer had been a little bit more of a story i think it only has one line of this family is a fortress and everything else is just the visuals of that Here's the thing, guys. I learned a long time ago to not, j not, not doubt James Cameron. Because, yes, it's easy for me to sit here and say, nobody wants Avatar 2, 3, and 4, right? Even though it is the highest grossing film of all time. Or Actually, I think Endgame actually beat it, didn't it? So I just got used to saying that for so many years. But uh, I, I just I learned to not doubt James Cameron. Every time that you think, okay, Cameron's lost it at this point, he comes out with something that completely changes the game. So uh, I, I don't think that this uh, minute and a half uh, preview, I guess you'd call it a teaser. I, I, I don't think that's what we should uh, all bet on. Uh, but again, uh, I, I, easy for me to say right now, I don't think that I think I'll wait for video on this kind of thing. But to, who knows? With Cameron, who knows? He might come out with something that we're not even expecting and completely blow us away. I don't know. We'll see. I, again, you're just, you're not going to get me. It's like betting against Tom Brady. I just know better at this point. I just know better. Uh, Cobra Kai season five moved up four months. That really makes you think Netflix is in some trouble, aren't they? If they're moving up, because uh, they are really struggling with some original programming right now in Cobra Kai. Uh, obviously, it was a hit before it got to Netflix, but it became a bigger hit once it got Netflix, got more people's eyeballs. But uh, yeah, hey, uh, I still, I will stand steadfast that Cobra Kai is the best written show on TV right now. That writing squad just has their shit together. They know the perfect way to keep their legacy characters as part of the main story while introducing the next generation and making it all work together, making nothing feel forced. And they just continue to redeem those bad guys. Karate Kid 1 was amazing. Everything after that was average to terrible. And they have redeemed Karate Kid 2 in my eyes. They even redeemed Karate Kid 3. They made Terry Silver, Terry freaking Silver, a great character in season four of Cobra Kai. It looks like he's going to be the main villain this year. I don't think Kreese is gone for good, guys. Uh, just, I, don't, I don't know. That guy's just too good to not be on the show somewhere. But the way they've got this set up is uh, you know, Daniel's going to be doing his thing with Terry, and then we got Johnny on a road trip with his son in Mexico. I mean, sign me up for Johnny in Mexico every single time, right? But uh, I, I expect to see... Uh, who do we got left? We got, what, next Karate Kid. So Hillary Swank will probably pop up on the show somewhere. And I think they got to bring Karate's bad boy, Mike Barnes, into this somewhere. He's the last uh, Karate Kid villain I think we haven't got yet. So they keep redeeming all these characters that were lousy back in the day. So I just, I trust that writing team for sure. And guys, if you want to do like real Star Wars sequels, get this writing team because they... 
seem to know how to respect what came before while introducing things to newer audiences. They're just, they're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. I hope that writing team stays together on whatever their next big project is. And lastly, I got to talk about this clip from the new Elvis movie. They showed this first clip of Austin Butler as Elvis. Now, we saw in the trailer, which, you know, can always make just about anything look awesome. But why I want to talk about this is I had one concern as a major Elvis fan is they said the stuff that takes place in the 50s, Austin Butler's actually singing because they don't have those masters for the Elvis uh, thing. They couldn't they couldn't blend it right with the movie. So everything in the 60s and 70s is going to be a blend of his voice and Elvis's voice. But the 50s songs are going to be uh, Austin Butler singing. And I was skeptical, guys, because uh, only one person could sing like freaking Elvis, and that was Elvis, right? But this clip, it's got a clip of him singing uh, Baby Let's Play House, and it's awesome. It sounds incredible. I think this guy is going to absolutely kill it. You guys, I, I mean, as a big Elvis fan, I think this guy is going to completely just kick ass in this role. He's going to be up for an Oscar for it. I really believe that. And that's why I'm excited. He's also cast as Fade Ralpha in Dune 2. I think this guy's star is on the rise. And uh, yeah, Elvis is going to be huge, huge, huge for him. And I can't wait. I've officially entered countdown on the mode for that. Going to pre-order my tickets. ASAP. Cannot wait. My most anticipated movie of the year for me right now is Elvis. And I know a lot of you probably don't don't even really know much about Elvis, but that's okay. Uh, I grew up with it. Uh, it's my mom's favorite thing of all time is Elvis. Books to me is Elvis to my mother, and she really passed it on to me, and that's something that I absolutely love now. So I'm excited about that movie, and fingers crossed, Baz Luhrmann rarely lets me down on these things. So that clip was really, really cool. Check it out if you have a chance. But guys, that was my week. Yes, I know these weekly updates get longer and longer, don't they? I just I love talking to you guys about just like what is going on. You know, it's really, really exciting times in this world I'm in. So guys, what are you up to? What are you watching? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What are you playing? Drop in the comments and let me know and have yourselves just an awesome, awesome weekend.